What's up everybody, it's Vern here with the Kings of Coffee and today on Coffee 101, we're talking coffee grinders. We're gonna tell you why you should invest in one, the two most common types you're likely to find, and we're gonna give you a couple of tips and recommendations to get started. Welcome back everybody to Coffee 101, where we simplify the techniques and terminology behind fresh roast coffee and homebrew. This will be the first in a series of videos designed to demystify and simplify some of the concepts surrounding specialty coffee, homebrew, fresh roast, and to act as a reference point for future videos as you go through and watch them. If you're confused by a concept or something we're talking about, we likely have shot a one-on-one on it and you can come back and take a look so you can figure out what the hell it is we're talking about. What are we talking about today? Well, we thought we would start with one of the three critical elements you need for a great homebrew. Uh, the first two are, of course, uh, good water and good coffee. Third, of course, is a consistent grind. Now, you can't get a consistent grind without a good grinder, so today's episode is about grinders. Grinders with an S. Let's get started. Why should you invest in a grinder? Why should you care about grinding fresh anyway? The answer is simple. Fresh ground coffee tastes better. Now, it's not just because I say so, there's an obvious reason for it. So if you look at a whole coffee bean, a lot of the flavor elements and aromas and the oils, all the great things that make coffee taste like coffee are sort of locked up and protected inside that bean. The moment you grind those beans, all those great flavor elements dissipate. So when you go to the store and you see a bag of ground coffee on the shelf, I mean, how long has that been there? You know, one, two, three, four, five months? That flavor's been gone. It's long gone. That's trash. You don't want that. Uh, if you buy coffee from things like convenience stores or gas stations, you have to be worried about contamination. Ground coffee can sort of take on the odors and flavors of things that it's stored near. If it's sitting out near, I don't know, some mackerel or something disgusting, those flavors can imprint onto the coffee and go into the cup and then you will be drinking it. Protect your coffee flavors and your oils, keep them in the whole bean, grind fresh just before you're ready to brew. Let's talk about the two most common types of grinders you're likely to find if you were to run out there and, and buy a grinder today. Up first is the flat blade grinder uh, here, as you can see, and the other type is the burr grinder. Uh, here's a manual burr grinder. It's got a little hand crank that you operate. And here is an electric burr grinder. You can plug it in, it's got a timer on it and stuff. First, we're gonna talk about the flat blade grinder. Flat blade grinder, um, Pretty cheap, maybe 15 bucks I think for this one. Find them on most grocery store shelves. Uh, principle simple. Here, let's take a look at some close-up footage. As you can see here, it's got a flat blade, as you would expect. Uh, just sort of spins around a little bit. As far as operation goes, very simple. Dump your coffee beans into the little well here. Uh, so, uh, put the top back on, and just go ahead and press this little button in pulses to try and get the best result. Now, I put grinder in quotes for this device because it's really more of an indiscriminate coffee chopper. That's really what it does. Uh, if you take a look at some of the results, they maybe resemble ground coffee, but they are not the same. And I will tell you why in a second. Uh, I do not recommend these, but first let's talk about the burr grinder. Burr grinders, again, here's my manual hand crank burr grinder, a little hand crank on there, and <clears throat> my uh, big electric barraza that I use for most of my coffee brewing. Burr grinders, don't, uh, they are a little bit more expensive. This one was maybe 30 bucks though, only double the price of the flat blade. And my electric one was probably a couple hundred bucks. Uh, but they produce much better results than flat blade and I will show you why. Let's take a look at some close-ups of operation here. Essentially what you have is two metal burrs, two little rings that fit close together with a little gap in between them. So basically, as one of the burrs spins around, it draws coffee down into the space between the two burrs and grinds it up against the teeth. Hopefully you could sort of get that out of some of the close-up footage I have of me operating the manual grinder. What you get is a more uniform grind size, which I'm gonna tell you why you care about that in a second. So why should you avoid a flat blade indiscriminate coffee chopper and spring for a burr grinder instead? Fact of the matter is, if we take a look at the results here that I'm gonna put up on the screen, you can see that the flat blade grinder, uh, grind so to speak, has chunks of varying sizes. There's big chunks and small chunks, little chunks. It's all very uneven. Uh, that's not desirable. If you look at the burr grinder results, you're gonna see that the grind is much more even. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's much more uniform. Why does this matter? Well, this is simple. When you go to brew your coffee, you want all of your grind particles to extract their flavor at the same time. Now, if you Google coffee extraction, there's a whole, you know, there's a whole mess of information about the science of it and everything else. 
Uh, I encourage you to do that if you want to. A more simple example I like to use, which is probably an oversimplification and roasters will cuss me if they see me, is uh, making fries. So if you were to take a potato and slice it up to make fries, you would probably slice up all the individual fries about the same size. You wouldn't cut the potato in half and then cut another piece paper thin and another piece a different size because when you drop it in oil, uh, they're not all going to cook at the same time. It's not going not gonna to work out. Uh, it's about the same for coffee grinds. You kind of want all of your coffee grinds to be the same size so they brew or extract uh, at the same time and not have these large random chunks and tiny chunks all mixed in together, which is what you get from the indiscriminate coffee chop. I would say if you have a flat blade, uh, just box it up and at the next office Christmas party, give it to somebody you don't like. That's, that's the best bet. Uh, tip number one, ditch your flat blade, indiscriminate coffee chopper, get yourself a burger grinder. Tip number two, evaluate your needs. Uh, if you're only drinking uh, maybe one cup of coffee a day or two, one to two cups, you wanna save some money, then maybe invest in a manual hand crank burr grinder. I mean, do your research first and find a nice one, but there are plenty out there that you can get for you know 50 bucks or less that are well reviewed and get the job done much better than a flat blade. Tip number three, um, electric burr grinders don't have to cost an arm and a leg. Uh, you can get a very functional electric burr grinder, especially for drip, pour over, or French press for not a lot of money, maybe 80 to 100 bucks. If you're gonna invest, you know, 50, 60 dollars in a manual burr grinder, you may just save that money and put it into a nice electric. Also, if you're drinking K-cups already, uh, you invested in the K-cup machine, so you may not wanna invest again. Uh, maybe the manual is your better option, but if you wanna drink better coffee and you're drinking more, then I would suggest uh, looking at an electric grinder. Tip number four and the final tip is to clean your grinder regularly. When I first got my electric grinder, I was not thinking about that, not following the manufacturer's recommendations uh, for cleaning. I would just sort of grind coffee and grind and grind and grind. And I noticed that my coffee didn't taste like it did the first couple times I was grinding it. Put two and two together and realized, oh, it's got old nasty grounds still in there. Now I make it a point to clean it every time I brew as my Chemex is uh, running through its process, I'll just kind of go in there, get all those old coffee granules out. But I absolutely recommend that you start with a clean grinder before you grind your coffee for each brew. Your taste buds will thank you. All right, so hopefully you found this video informative and now you know why you should get rid of your flat blade indiscriminate coffee chopper and go out and get yourself a nice burr grinder. If you like this video, please click the like button. Uh, or consider subscribing if you wanna see more videos like this or our sit downs with coffee roasters in the local area and beyond. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of really great content coming up so we just want you guys to stay with us. We know this is our second episode and uh, the production is going to get better, promise you. Yeah, so uh, like, subscribe and uh, yeah, get out there and brew better coffee.